If any of you notice that I'm wearing the same clothes that I wore yesterday, it's because I have to stay dressed all the time now uh, during Feast of Tabernacles because if I wake up at 4 in the morning and I've had enough sleep, I, I'm going to want to go outside in the sukkah and say my morning prayers. And I'm not going to go out there with all the uh, people we have roaming around in this community. I'm not going to go out there in my nightgown. So, I um, finished uh, my cooking demonstrations. The cauliflower, I should have cut it up. It's just, it just takes too long to cook when you leave it all in one piece. Or, I should have basted it with some kind of liquid, like every half hour. But anyway, I haven't uh, tasted it yet. I wanted to talk about social distance, distancing because I was doing social disti distancing for about two decades now. Um, in fact, uh, I lost the possibility of a, a very nice job in, what was it? In 2004, because <laughs> when I went for the interview, and I had a friend that worked there who recommended me. So I go to the interview. The uh, supervisor is a, um, you know, maybe a 30-year-old man. And he went to shake my hand. And I said, oh, I don't shake hands. And he said, you don't want to shake my hand? I, I said, no, I, I, don't, I don't shake hands. And, and you know, he's, um, he's starting to say things like, well, how could you possibly uh, take care of a patient if you don't want to touch the patient? And, you know, I must have said something like, well, I have no problem touching people medically, but not socially. Now, if I would have said what I really wanted to say, I wanted to say this so bad, but of course I didn't say it. I would have said, well, I have no problem with medical touching. You need an enema? That would have been great. <laughs> but anyway, you get my point. Now, what I was thinking of today and before today, some people believe that we are descended from, from apes and other primates, or at least we had a common ancestor. So if these apes, gorillas, chimpanzees, whatever type you want to think of, if they were before us and we came after them and we are more advanced with a larger brain and the very, very special capability of speech, then why are we copying them in our greetings because you know when when uh, apes uh, and other animals of that sort see each other again you know they touch each other they kiss each other they hug each other I mean <laughs> why should we copy that if we're more advanced and if we have this this wonderful amazing miraculous thing of speech and in so many different languages why would we go back to to touching, to greet each other, you know, and uh, bumping elbows and whatever, if we have speech. They're doing it, the, the apes, etc., because that's all they can do, right? But we can do so much more. So isn't it better to do the advanced thing instead of the, the primitive thing? Now, it's different if, you know, someone's your family or something like that. I used to have a, a plumbing company here, and um, one of them told me that they only hire believers, meaning they only hire Christians. So one day they sent the young man here to install something new uh, in my laundry room outside, and he offered me his hand to shake, and I said, if you can give me an example in the Bible of a man shaking a woman's hand, I will shake your hand. And he said, well, 
I don't think I can give you an example like that. He was very young. I think he thought I was weird. But, you know, just because you haven't thought of something before doesn't mean it's weird. It's actually very logical. There was a story once I read about a man who sold newspapers on the street in New York. You know, he had one of those very profitable, nice uh, magazine and newspaper stands. He had his clientele, hundreds of people or more, you know, uh, buying newspapers, magazines, chewing gum, stuff like that from him. And he was so friendly, and he always shook people's hands heartily. And one day, he got this, this horrid, very uncomfortable rash on his hands. He went to the skin doctor. And the skin doctor told him, don't shake hands anymore. This is going to take a while to cure. But, you know, from now on, and when you're cured, when it heals, don't shake hands anymore because this is how you got it. So he suffered so much with that, that affliction on the skin of his hands. He never shook hands again, and he'd explain it to every person. He'd be friendly in other ways by the warm way he greeted them or the words he used or the compliments he gave them. So th this is no joke, and to me, society is having a reset. It's being rebooted. So let's, let's, let's cooperate. There was a time when I first started, you know, doing this or not doing this, when I would shake hands only uh, with women. But a few years after that, I had a terrible time trying to tell if someone is a woman or a man. And uh, picture this. Women who smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol for, for years their voice gets very deep, like a man's voice. And I, I'll tell you this, it will never, ever turn back again, even if they quit all that. It will stay deep like that. The, the vocal cords are very sensitive. So the, many women have this deep voice now. And the man, if he's obese, he starts getting, you know, the look of a woman, you know, especially in the chest. And... And if uh, the fashion now is everybody wear the same thing, you know, like uh, dark blue jeans, you know, with a t-shirt. So they're wearing the same clothes, they're the same weight, they have the same type of voice. And one other thing, and they all have short hair. So how on earth am I supposed to tell if somebody's a man or a woman? Many times I can, sometimes I can't. Now, um... I think I already told the story of uh, me being in the the health club here, and I was in the the ladies shower area. And of course, when I'm showering in there, I take off my glasses. <laughs> so so somebody opens the door of my shower, and I screamed because you know I don't have my glasses on. The person is very big, has short hair. I don't know if it's a man or a woman in such a split second. Anyway, she said she was sorry and left. And, you know, nobody came when they heard the scream. Nobody. So is it so safe to be in a health club? I don't think so. Um, I also had a patient when I walk, worked in a surgical center in, um, in uh, South Florida. And uh, to this day, uh, I do not know if the patient was male or female. Um, they were coming there for female hormone in injections. Now that could be uh, because a woman is having trouble with menopause, but it also could be if somebody's preparing for a, a gender change surgery. So when uh, these group of doctors had this type of patient, they were uh, very careful about the, the patient's feelings and embarrassment and uh, privacy. So they wouldn't put very much on the patient's chart. That's why I didn't know, you know, if it was male or female. Anyway, that's my story. If you uh, think about Asian cultures, and remember, the land of Israel is in Asia. Asian cultures, 
um, you know, they, they give a little bow, they go like this, you know, welcome. They don't touch. In fact, um, when I was walking around Jerusalem with my in-law, a male, that's what we'll call him, and um, he didn't speak good English, and I spoke a little bit of Hebrew and English, and we stopped, and I asked this young man, uh, he looked like an Orthodox man, Orthodox Jewish man, and I asked him for directions. I was trying to find where the Temple Mount was, and there's so many narrow passageways there in the old city of Jerusalem. So I stopped and asked him. He looked at me, he looked down, and then he kept walking away. And I thought that was wonderful. I thought, wow, this man's wife doesn't have a thing in the world to worry about. He won't even look at a, a woman in, in the eye for more than like two seconds, let alone speak to her, let alone touch her, let alone anything else, nothing. And I thought that was great. Anyway, think about it.